this is Tatiana of Blogovision. I'm so happy to see you again because the season of 2023 Eurovision is starting. You could say now, we already know the official dates of Eurovision 2023. And the final is going to be on the 13th of May. So we are having semifinals on Tuesday, the 9th of May, a second semifinal, the 11th of May, and the final, the grand final on the 13th of May. And even though it was a tight bid between Glasgow and Liverpool, it's Liverpool to host Eurovision 2023. Yes! Beatles are coming. <laughs> um, in fact, it's called sort of a pop capital, yeah, like a pop city, uh, Liverpool, and uh, mostly well known, of course, for its uh, Beatles cultures and Beatles uh, like related museums and stuff. Uh, and of course, it's uh, generally an interesting place to visit in the UK. Um, what about Glasgow? What happened? So many people hoped or believed already or expected uh, Glasgow, Scotland to be hosting Eurovision 2023. Well, uh, there are quite a few factors that are in play. First, we're talking accommodation. Second, we're talking, of course, all the facilities and conference centers and uh, obviously press media centers and uh, the location of the arena, the capacity of the arena. And Liverpool Arena, MNS, is a perfect place for that. It's a bank arena. It's right near the river and the views should be stunning. Good location to just have a walk and uh, enjoy the nice views great for conference center being located right next to it because then you can just easily move from one to the other and for delegations for organizers hosts volunteers and uh, all the crews and fans as well it's like a super super easy going to be easy to navigate you know no more uh, going god knows where in labyrinth and looking for where one building starts and another one begins so where the media center is and where the uh, concert location is myself traveling every year to wherever eurovision takes me sometimes it's a pain in the ass let's be honest when you have to like come to uh, God knows, like, edge of the city location and then the conference center is so far away that until you reach it, uh, you lose some time and maybe already the press conference starts and uh, you don't manage to be in the front seats. You know, it's annoying. Sometimes it's annoying. Uh, one thing that Glasgow probably didn't have as much as Liverpool is uh, the program how to present, to represent Ukraine and Ukrainian victory in uh, 2023 Eurovision. And why is it important? Well, because Ukraine obviously cannot host Eurovision 2023. It was obvious from the very start. Uh, and uh, it's important that this show is not just about the UK, uh, but uh, also celebrating Ukrainian victory and uh, showcasing its culture, its music, its diversity. Uh, its traditions and uh, history and so on and so forth. Uh, not to mention how many Ukrainians are obviously living now in uh, Britain itself, uh, in uh, also in Liverpool, no? uh, in uh, whole Europe, and that's a great chance for them to bind, to unite, to support, uh, you know, representing their country in Liverpool. Uh, it's going to be quite a spectacular show, I believe. Now, there are some questions that arise, of course, as to one, what about the hosts of the evening? Uh, is it going to be that BBC hosts? Uh, is it going to be British uh, hosts only? Or are we talking also uh, Ukrainian hosts or mixed? What's going to happen? Well, I do not believe, honestly, that all the hosts will be Ukrainian. No chance, uh, because uh, the whole production team is a BBC team and that's the main broadcaster and uh, they have had such a lot of experience in that area, you know, that uh, hands down they will choose one to like uh, BBC presenters or maybe a BBC presenter and somebody very uh, well known like uh, Italy did with uh, Mika. However, it would be interesting if one of the hosts was uh, Ukrainian, for instance, and uh, they could have three hosts like it's popular to have now, like in Turin 2022. So that's about presenting. What about logistics then? There is a train, obviously. Yeah, there is a connection between London and the other parts of UK with Liverpool. Liverpool is not far from Manchester. So if you wish, uh, obviously, uh, organize your commuting from Manchester to uh, Liverpool. That's, that's also an option. Uh, some might take uh, a train directly London-Liverpool. It takes approximately three hours then to get to the arena. 
And um, yeah, I mean, there are options. As for accommodation, hotels, I believe Glasgow would have had more opportunities to host uh, thousands of people, but it doesn't mean that uh, Liverpool cannot cope with it. It might be a little bit uh, tighter and pricier, obviously. Uh, so do not expect the UK trip to be the cheapest uh, in 2023. And uh, some of you might obviously need visas to the UK as well, and that will add on top of that. But uh, yeah, use your privileges if you don't need, uh, you know, special travel documents to travel to the UK, because UK hadn't hosted Eurovision before in 25 years. It's the first time in 25 years that the UK again has a chance to uh, show their beautiful country, showcase uh, UK culture and music, which is so rich and so underestimated at Eurovision. Uh, for some reason, for many reasons, yeah. You know, there was so much speculation about, oh, Brexit, uh, UK doesn't get any more points because of Brexit. Uh, it gets null points almost every year because of the political and geographical and so on. Okay, and then what happened? Sam Ryder came and showed that, you know, he's Sam Ryder, he can, <laughs> you know, go to space and back, to the moon and back. And now this kind of Mm, uh, sort of spell, evil spell on Britain is over. Um, and I think all British fans of Eurovision couldn't be happier for Liverpool and for UK in general to have the privilege to host it. I'm sure UK will have a great, great, great experience hosting it. So see you hopefully at Eurovision 2023 in the UK. Woo -hoo! Have a good day, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching me and stay tuned with Logovision. Mwah.